and we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be doing the level 68 Scholar Quest. And as always, hello from Ifri. So we are here in Camp Tranquil in South Shroud at 1728. And we need to talk to Alka-Zolka. So here we go. The quest is called The Chase. So Alka-Zolka's face is drawn into tight lines. So Mifri, something terribly, something's terribly wrong. Ever since she collapsed, Sir Toto hasn't so much as stirred. According to Saruto Kurito, the sickness transforms not only the body, but also the quality of the afflicted individual's aether. As such, attempting to summon Lilac in her current state likely drained her of nearly all her vitality. A bit of rest, however, should have been enough to replenish her reserves, and she should have should be awake by now. The fact that she's not means something else is amiss. Please go and have a word with Saruto Kurito, scholar to scholar. Perhaps if you were to combine your wits, you might learn what is wrong. I shall remain here and look after Satoto. Cool. So let us go to Saruto Kurito in Wondrous Palace. Well, near Wondrous Palace. So let's go. I wonder if they'll ever do anything in the game, kind of like Dynamis, like travel into the past and we can see Nim in all of its glory. I would like there to be more like, you know, past reflections, past events and so on. Imagine if they ever released a past instance which was modeled in the same graphical style as 1.0. That would be hilarious. You say, yeah, we're so comfortable now with the game, we can actually make fun of the past. Anyway, here's Saruto Kurito. So, Satoto so still lumbers on. Normally, when scholars summon their fairies, they do so by extracting a portion of the aether circulating through their body and willing it to take shape. By releasing that form, they can then dismiss it and the aether will flow back into the bodies. This is what should have happened to Satoto when she fell unconscious. I can understand why she remains asleep, unless... What if she only managed a partial summoning? There is a possibility that all of Satoto's aether fled her body upon calling to Lilac, causing her to then fall unconscious before the fairy could fully manifest. That would mean this unbound platform is out there somewhere, aimlessly roaming the land and preventing her from regaining consciousness. You and Alka must hurry to find and dispatch of it before it wanders too far. It may be the only way to wake her. Cool. Okay, so we need to report back to Alka Zolka and tell him what we found. And it makes sense in a sort of, you know, fantasy magic sort of way, but yeah. Simply, she didn't have the strength to fully summon it. That's why it broke. It just flew out, out the the roof. It wasn't fully ready, so... Okay, here's Alka Zolka. So, finally, you've returned. What did Satoto Kurito have to say? Satoto Kurito. A partially summoned familiar? Then as... Sarita Kuruto suggests we must hunt this thing down and destroy it. Do you recall how, right before Satoto fell unconscious at the ruins, a purple sphere of light appeared before us? That must be a phantom fairy to which he refers. The problem is, the moment it materialized, it vanished from Andapol Keep. There's no telling where it could have gone. The two of you are looking for an looking awfully somber. What's wrong? It's like convenient timing. Is he going to tell us exactly where it is? Does this thing by any chance resemble a floating violet orb? So you've seen it? No, but lately many of the whalers have been claiming they encountered a spectre in the forest. In fact, the reports have been so numerous in number that I've been given orders to investigate the matter. Interestingly enough, the description they've given me seems to match this phantom fairy of yours. Aye, that's, that'll be it. Alright. While I'd like to immediately begin my search of this fairy spectre, there are a few rather pressing matters I must attend to first. Not to worry, Mifri and I will take it from here. We've already troubled you enough as it is. 
Very well then. My men have spotted the thing along the upper paths at um, Snake Mold. You may begin by searching both of those places. Thank you. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for the young lady. It's not as though I could simply stand by and watch as a helpless girl fights for her life. Bye. It may not seem it, but somewhere in the man is a good heart. Now then, let's immediately begin surveying the areas Land Landonel mentioned. You take the upper pass and I'll go to Snake Mole. Okay, so let's go here. Thankfully, in the old areas, we can mount and run a lot quicker. And white quests are there waiting for me. And that'll be the thing as well. Like once I finish this class of seventy, I wonder which one I'll get to seventy next. A destination. So you notice nothing out of the ordinary. Cool. Next. I'm so happy that I finally got the Fenrir mount. It was like three years of casual MGP gathering to get it. I'm so happy I've got it finally. But it's kind of sad in a way because Fenrir was revered. He was such an awesome mob in Final Fantasy XI. You notice nothing out of the ordinary. So not unless he's just not fully awoken yet. He's the aspect of the moon, for goodness sake. So if Garuda is wind and Ifrit is whatever. Okay, we have a fight on our hands. So let's do it. Actually, because it's an outdoor fight, I'm actually going to summon my Chocobo. So the Chocobo can help out. In case you don't know, the Fenrir mount you buy for 1 million MGP from the gold saucer. At the corner of your eye, you eye an eerie glowing presence floating towards you. It releases a hideous scream and you find yourself under attack. Rip. Oh, wow. Hello. It's pretty. It's pretty. Go into the light. No. At least we have our Chocobo to help with the DPS. Yeah. Because both... That's what's amazing about it, is that both Eos and the Chocobo can heal me. And I, obviously I can heal myself, so... I do wonder what the... Uh, what's going to mean. It feels wrong to kill it, to be perfectly honest. Okay, so let's go back to Camp Tranquil. I'm just going to teleport there to save myself a few seconds of running. Cool. If you like Fenrir, let me know in the comments down below. So uh, it's about time you came, my friend. I was beginning to grow concerned. One of the beasts in the forest had gotten the better of you. I myself encountered a fair few woodland creatures during my search, one of which was a purple sphere of light. Alas, it turned out to simply be a will o' the wasp. Wisp, sorry. By the expression on your face, I assume your investigation went no better. Where the Seven Hells did that f thing fly off to? There you are. Just moments ago, one of my men was attacked by your fairy. What? According to him, it disappeared into the lost city of Andapur. We won't be able to give chase uh, just yet. However, entry into the area is heavily restricted due to the darkness which uh, permates it. We need to receive permission from the Order of the Twin Adder. I shall go and request that right now. In the meantime, I ask that you wait here. Uh, Landonel, with all due respect, why is it that you're so intent on helping us? To put it bluntly, the fa fairy is our responsibility, not yours. It's in my jurisdiction, isn't it? 
So I told you before, green of skin or not, I cannot stand and see the young girl suffer. After all, the duty of the strong is to protect the weak. So now, if the two of you are planning on joining me in this fight against the fairy phantom, I suggest you begin making preparations. Taking this thing down is going to be no easy task. Cool. So obviously the last quest will be in Lost City of Vanderpoor. It must be a solo instance. So... Well, that was, that was a lot shorter than I thought it would be, but yeah. So anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching, and as always, goodbye from me, and goodbye from Mifri. Bye, guys.